Hey, I'm doing good. <laughs> We've had some rain here, but not like you guys. Uh, but yeah, our lawn did flood again. <laughs> uh, but everything's going well. As a matter of fact, tonight I have a great guest on. We've got with us Ann Manna. She was first licensed back in 1979. Her call is Whiskey Bravo 1 Alpha Radio Uniform. I'm sorry, 1977. She got her novice ticket. Um, and upgraded to her general that same year and then has since become an extra class license. And uh, she first, uh, she's with the YLRL. She was first uh, introduced to that when she made her very first YL contact. They sent her a, uh, the YL sent her uh, information on the YLRL and an application. And so she joined that along with uh, the Women's Radio Amateur Operators of New England, uh, WRONE. And she was very active and she was asked to run for the District 1 chairman position and she held that job for over 20 years. And uh, since back in uh, 2008 and 2009, she was president of the YLRL and she is was elected secretary in 2010. So Ann Manna, welcome aboard, Ann. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here and uh, uh, thank you for having me. I'm always happy to talk about uh, Young Ladies Radio League. Yes, because we need more YLs in the hobby, and this is a great way uh, to get YLs to feel comfortable. Um, so tell everybody about the YLRL uh, that don't know. I mean, how long has it been around? You know, how many members do you have? Well, YLRL started back in 1939. Great story on how it began. Um, it has to do with an ad in QST and... If you wanted to hear the, read the whole story, you can go to YLRL.org and you'll be able to read it. Uh, so 77 years that the uh, organization has been in existence. And we have uh, close to 400 members around the world, including members in Canada and 21 other countries. So it's not huge, but growing. We've uh, gathered many new members this spring. And hopefully we'll get more from people watching this show. Um, now, I know you, uh, you're very active with NETS on Thursday nights. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? And I think I have a slide on that one, Brian, as well. Okay. Uh, there are several NETS all through the week, um, all across the country. Some are local, some are international. Uh, there are lots of NETS. Thursday is a very good day to get on the air for YLs. Uh, there's a net called the Tangle Net on uh, 1800 UTC. I had about 14.297. Um, and it uh, has been going on for a long time. And uh, there's always somebody there uh, to chat with. Uh, several years ago, another gal from uh, St. Louis and I decided to uh, start an evening net. There had not been an evening YL net, uh, and so we got it started on 14.288 uh, on Thursday evenings. And uh, the time isn't quite right there on that because it's, uh, uh, well, yeah, it is, I'm sorry. Uh, summertime is uh, uh, zero, there's something wrong there. Um, zero 0200? Well, it's it's zero one hundred right now, and it goes to zero two hundred on uh, standard time. Um, so it shouldn't be zero zero zero. It should be zero one hundred, because that's uh, the uh, Thursday evening net, and that's really oh. a wide open net, and it's for um, just a chance for YLs to talk to other YLs. There's no uh, big structure to it. If you can hear somebody, you call them, um, and of course sometimes. Some people hear each other and others don't. We've had check-ins from all over the country. Uh, every week is different. That's preceded now by an Echolink net that just got started about a year, a little better than a year ago. And uh, it's run on the uh, Alara node uh, for Echolink. And that's been a wonderful gateway for technician le level ham YLs to get on. It's only YLs. And again, sometimes it's a structured um, topic and sometimes it's just a uh, share whatever you like uh, kind of thing. And it's been a great way for a lot of um, new YL, newly licensed YLs to get on the air and get over their mic fright. 
and uh, of course on uh, and that Echolink net is uh, an hour earlier than the HF net and then there's uh, the Minnow Club up in the northwest has an Echolink net another hour later so it's a great uh, evening to get on the air and uh, enjoy talking to YLs um, and there's also a DX net on Mondays and these are YLs only allowed on these nets, correct? Men can listen, but they can't participate. Correct, and if a, and actually, oftentimes the uh, the OMS will hang out and wait till uh, the net's over if they especially are trying to collect some of the uh, YL awards. Oh, very good, very good. Now. Um, you also do some YL contests, I saw. I know when I first joined, I think you have a year-long contest, right? And I think the one I did, it was like every YL you talk to, you ask what their favorite color was, and you log it, and then you can turn that in and win a certificate. So kind of what are you, uh, um, what kind of uh, contest are you guys running this year? Okay, we call it a friendship award, and it's only open to YLs. You don't have to be a member of YLRL, but of course we'd like you to be. But uh, this year's topic is favorite movie, and we've had uh, favorite animal and colors, and we did an alphabet one. And it's just a chance for uh, YLs to make contact with each other. And the nifty thing about this one is it can be absolutely any mode, including Echo Link. So, uh, but we have some more standard awards, which are open to all licensed uh, amateurs, including uh, W-A-S-Y-L, W-A-C-Y-L, and Y-L-C-C, -C and so forth. And I know you've, you, I've saw on the YLRL, you had some de-expeditions. I think Brian just showed that one slide uh, where some YLs went to Granada. Um, was that organized through the YLRL, or they're just w members who went on a de-expedition? Uh, members who went on a de-expedition, it wasn't organized by the organization, but it, it included um, members of the organization who went on it. Okay, and you have s some conventions here stateside every now and then as well, correct? Yes, about every three or four years we do have a convention. They've been in varied places. Our last one was in uh, 2014 in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, previously we've been in Boston, Mass, and Huntsville, um, Denver, even Kauai, Hawaii, back when we celebrated our 50th anniversary in 1989. So you should have one coming up probably next year then, correct? Hopefully next year or the year after. It's either three or four years, depends on uh, how, uh, who's ready to host it and so forth. And there's a big one coming up. It's not really by the YLRL, but the Bailara uh, group, um, they're having their international YL conference. I know you guys are promoting that as well um, over in England. Uh, and that looks like a lot of fun. I hope so. I'm planning to go. I'm looking forward oh, to it. Oh, very good. International yeah. YL is the most non-organization organization you ever ran into. It's just a, an event that happens every two years, but it is not an organization it, it's kind of hard to explain and i think we have a lot more slides on that brian if you just want to roll through those because uh they're going to be some pretty cool outings there it looks like you're going to the uh, enigma decoding facilities which looks like a lot of fun and um what else was there oh the that mansion yeah the woburn abbey is that right yes and they're going to have tea, afternoon tea, and tour the gardens and the mansion. And uh, really sounds like a lot of fun. And then they're going to, what, end it off with the uh, convention, um, the RSGB convention, is that right? Or RBS? Yes. Uh, yeah, the Royal so I think it's the next Society. slide. Yeah, the Royal Society of Great Britain, uh, their uh, convention is held in it's the last weekend of uh, the International YL Conference, so the RSGB convention. So, yes, we're going to take part in that as well. Yeah, so it'll be a fun, jam-packed week. Any uh, YLs looking to take a trip over to England and uh, check things out there? Now, um, anybody interested in joining, how much is membership and uh, what is what, get, what do you get for your membership? Okay, it costs only $15 a year to uh, be a member if you're in the U.S., an extra $4 for the uh, cost of mailing if you're in Canada and Mexico. 
and the uh, DX price is a little higher. And family members are only $3 additional because they share the same magazine, which is published six times a year. It's called YL Harmonics. It's a full uh, eight and a half by 11 format magazine with news of members and uh, activities that are going on. Lots of pictures and uh, one issue each year is the directory issue with information about the membership and that's a members only issue but the other issues uh, it are always available at ham fests and conventions around the country and with you joining the YLRL in addition to the newsletter you're helping to promote to promote wilds in the hobby right and you have scholarships and things like that right absolutely we we exist to support yls in a hobby that's overwhelmingly male and um, one of our one of our projects that we're most proud of is our scholarship fund which is funded entirely by donations and we have three scholarships uh, two are two thousand dollar scholarships for full-time students and one is a one thousand dollar scholarship uh, for part-time students who are working full-time and uh, that we're very pleased that we're able to continue to provide these scholarships and they are named in honor of some very much beloved former members of YLRL, Ethel Smith, Mary Lou Brown and Marty Wessel and people uh, who are not even aware of YLRL certainly know the names Ethel Smith and Mary Lou Brown. Very good. Well, so anybody out there, hopefully you'll join the YLRL, any newly licensed YLs, or if you've been licensed a while, um, we want the more members, the better. So thanks, Anne, for joining us. Appreciate it and telling everybody about the YLRL. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to uh, chatting with you on the air. All right, and have fun at your trip uh, at Bailara. That sounds like a good time. All right, and that's... Uh, as far as DXing and contesting goes, there's a little bit going on, so I have a short video on upcoming contests, including some YL contests. You know, Val, I don't think I have that video. I think it just had this It's in the email. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, all I have is the slides. I can try and... It, it's in it. there. I looked at it. Hang on. Huh. Is, uh, uh, is Anna is. still here and I can ask her some questions? Yeah, actually, I, I can get that video for okay. in a sec. Great. Okay. Um, what, I'll start with that. Anna, first of all, so nice to meet you. Um, I have to shamelessly, shamefully admit that I am not a member and I am going to look into becoming a member ASAP. Um, so I do have a couple of questions for you. And uh, first, how did you get involved in ham radio? Well, I guess probably... The same answer that about half of the YLs have. Uh, the guy I married was a ham before I married him. Okay, that's great. And I'll tell you my story. Um, my husband got his uh, license a couple years before me, and he he influenced me to get it by telling me that he didn't think I could do it. He didn't think I could pass the test. So um, <laughs> anyhow, uh, what, do you, what do you say to people to try to get them involved in ham radio? I've told them, uh, I guess probably for me, the thing that I have enjoyed the most from ham radio has to be the um, people that I've met, the women and men that I've met through ham radio, the travel that I have been able to do that I never expected. Um, I've been to Australia, I've been to Europe, I'm going to England and Scotland, um, places all over the United States that I never, some places I might not have gone to and some places that uh, I longed to go to and didn't think I would get to. And it's because of ham radio that I met people and traveled to places to meet them in person and talk to them on the air and uh, I think that's what I like about ham radio but uh, there's so many options emergency uh, work and uh, message handling there's just so many options in ham radio that uh, there's something for everybody absolutely and 
you saying that you're traveling or have traveled all over the world meeting other YLs, do you get kind of the same feeling from them? Are they in it for the same reasons? Um, do they get the same pleasure just meeting other people around the world, um, other women? Uh, what did you kind of get from that? I think just like all hams, men or women, everybody finds their niche. Um, because of the traveling part, I've met other YLs who enjoy that aspect of uh, amateur radio, traveling to meet others. But um, I think the um, emergency um, communications, public service, I do some public service work also, Boston Marathon. Uh, it's always a great opportunity to help others and uh, use your skills. Very good. Uh, it, it must just be so exciting. The other thing I have to know is, um, do you have uh, like daily nets or weekly nets on HF um, that we can all join up on? Um, anything like that? Yes. In fact, uh, Val and I did talk about that. There are nets on um, several different days on HF. Um, some local nets on um, like 75 or 40. Uh, well, 40 is actually pretty good nationwide, uh, 20 meters, um, and also um, even now some echo link. And by the way, my first name is Anne with an E. Yeah, it's okay. Anne. <laughs> okay. And Brian? I'm sorry, I, I, I always no, I shut down my uh, computer's uh, screen, so I don't always see the whole like last conversation. So I apologize for reiterating what you guys already talked about there. Uh, go ahead, Val. Um, you know, I would just wanted Brian to fix the name on the thing, but yeah, um, there, if you go to the YLRL.org and you go into their nets, there's a whole list of nets, um, that are local and th most of them are the Thursday nets. But like Ann said, there were some on some other days as well. I think there was a Friday morning net and Ann mentioned a Monday net. Um, but Thursday night seems to be the big night. So if you're not busy on Thursday nights and you're a YL, I'm sure you can find a net. <laughs> so um yeah there's a whole list right there so um so get out there and uh and, and like ann said it's probably a really good way to get over your mic fright speaking to other women um about non-technical things um because i know when i first started i was afraid to get on the air people were would um i was so afraid people would ask me technical questions that i would not know the answer to um so i we had a fun net luckily where i lived um every week it was different what's your favorite movie what's your favorite toppings you know just uh very easy things to to draw you in and get you uh uh over your fear of the microphone so um, but yeah, that's all I've got. I, I completely understand that. And, uh, it's more, it's not about mic shyness. You don't mind talking as long as they're not going to ask you about, whoa, what are you running there? What's your station? Tell me your setup. And you're going, oh gosh, I can't remember the antenna exactly. Um, you know, it, those things are really rough. And then, it, then you get, um, not everybody wants to talk about the weather every single day, every single QSO. It's fine. I know that's one of the things that people talk about a lot, but it's hard for us to just, that's not what I guess we're programmed to do. What do you think, Ann? I agree that I think most all of us are, are apt to throw in a, a weather report, especially if the weather's been unusually hot or unusually wet, but uh, you're right. And uh, I was going to comment one other thing that I found a lot of the YLs have really got involved with is national parks on the air. So um, activating and working them, but a lot of the gals have been having a blast activating national parks. That's another little hobby activity for ham radio. Oh, I wish I had some pictures. We just activated a national park this last weekend and it was a blast. So we went to the great sand dunes and um, it's, it's an amazing place. I've never been to in Colorado and I've been here my whole life, obviously. And it was a lot of fun running that pile up and running the portable stations, no less. So we made about 344 contacts, by the way, that was, it was so much fun. And I am a chaser as well. Uh, Val, do you chase the, the potas? You know, I was at first, but I've just been so busy. I haven't had a chance to uh, stay active with it. I started off uh, the first few months and I was really crazy about it, but um, I just don't have the time. So I had to let something go. 
Yeah, understandable. And uh, well, let's check in with Brian. Brian, how you doing on that video? He's got it. Got it already. Okay. Well, well, I'll stand by then, you guys. Okay. Here, since we're in the spirit of YL, I'll tell you about the Australian Ladies Amateur Radio Association. They're having the 36th annual YL contest. Now, YLs can work everyone. YLs and OMs. Now, OMs can only work YLs. It's going to be both sideband NCW or give your hand at trying both. It's going to be 80 meters through 10, no work bands, and no 160. And also, two meter and echo link contacts will count as well. There's the different exchanges you would give, whether you're an Alara member, a YL non-member, or an OM. Now, if you want more information, just go to that website. Uh, the YLRL is having their DX North American YL Anniversary Contest. Now, you can work the same station on different bands. Your multipliers are your ARRL sections, Canadian provinces, and DX entities. Um, and there's the different power levels and what those points are worth. That's an easy exchange. It's your call sign, a serial number, sequential serial number, uh, your signal report, and your ARRL section, Canadian province, or DX entity. And for more information, you can go to the YLRL.org.